Man, this is lifestyles of the poor and unfucking fortunate. But I tell you what, but 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 bitch, we got views. It's uh, I got some shit to say to podcast, man. We're back, like we don't stop, cause. I never do. All I do is fucking work. I'm always sitting here working, man. Y'all know me. Fuck you, Squint. That's right. R.I.P. Whizzle fizzle. Forever and always. You are turned into ChadArmsTV.com. Shout out to the big guy. Anxiety available now. Uh, with me tonight. Uh, it's a great night for me. Because, A, I've known this guy for a while, but I haven't seen him in a long while. But uh, literally, one of the most talented vocalists I've ever came across Personally and in person, and had the pleasure of knowing through these years, ladies and gentlemen, Rufio Hooks. Hey, <laughs> yeah. guys, you guys, I appreciate the applause. <laughs> yeah, but then they'll just stop on you. Like, wow. Where, where'd y'all go? They, they thought I was giving a speech. That's uh, right. welcome, Rufio. Thank you, man. Squints, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate the love, bro. It means, bro. It means a lot to me, absolutely. Uh, but I've been trying to get you here for a minute, as you know. Yeah, so my guy's been busy, uh, Rufio Hooks. Uh, it's probably a face that most of you, have, I mean, let's just be honest. Some of you have probably never seen, heard. That's just how it goes. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people we bring through this platform, that's mainly what we try to do is introduce them to people that they should know. I'm here by myself tonight with this gentleman to let you guys know this is someone you should know. Okay. Right? Yeah, I uh, hope so. <laughs> right? No, so... We'll just, let me rewind and just, can I bring everybody up to how I, I ran into you and encountered you for the first time? Okay, let's go. Bro. Okay. I'm, I'm so, trying to hear it. so back in the heyday that, that Chatty references to all the time on like when we were doing shows, we used to do shows literally both nights a weekend, every fucking weekend, every week. It never mattered. It, wherever the flyer was getting made, we wanted on it. We were there. That was just the life. It was just CD, 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 show, show, shows. Along those lines, I started doing a number of shows with a gentleman named Sebastian Garcia, right? Yeah. Yeah. With Sebastian Garcia was a gentleman named Jay Cyrus. And they, like, presented themselves as, like, a duo. Jay Cyrus was a, a Caucasian rapper. Uh, he, he could rap, you know what I'm saying? And this guy back here was a monster fucking vocalist, right? <laughs> and together, they're a very entertaining duo. Uh, I watched them do, literally, I could probably count on one hand how many shows we had in tandem with them where they were a part of like the same showcase or whatever the fuck was going on. So I didn't have many opportunities, but I promise. And I told, I told Rufio this when he got here that he has always stood out to me as some of the most undeniable talent that I've ever been like early on that I encountered like undeniable you. And, uh, you remember that guy T Y I do remember. Yeah. The, the dude that could sing. Yes. Bro. Yeah. He was crazy. Exactly. So that guy, and you are the only two that I, I can talk like that about through the years vocally, it, besides my guy, Bobby Hooks. I mean, you know what I'm saying? But undeniable talent. These guys were just unbelievably talented. Facts. Fast forward 10 or 12 years. I haven't seen Rufio in probably shit eight or nine years. It's been a minute. Right? It's been a minute. He hasn't aged a day. I told him that when he walked uh. in the room. But uh, since then, a lot has happened. A lot has happened. Notice when I referenced to him the first time, I called him Sebastian Garcia. Well, that's how I met him, was Sebastian Garcia. Fast forward 10 or 12 years, as a consumer, me, I've watched Jay Cyrus turn into a social media fucking goofball that is one of the funniest people on the internet, literally. He blew up on Vine, took off, like, joined some agency or some shit, like a... a like a, a content agency where they create content or something. I don't know what he he took chase the bag. He chased his dream, went to fucking LA and now he's fucking famous on Instagram too. And TikTok and all that shit. Now, see, see the thing with Jay too, is was crazy. Is, um, um, I mean, working with him, I knew, I knew he was like, like that dude, every time we'd be in the studio, he would just have us laughing, like bawling, like crying. And I was, I would always tell him, I'm like, man, you're just an overall talent. Like, you're not just a musician or a rapper, a lyricist. He could write pop songs. He could he could act. Right. Honestly, he could act if he wanted to. He could do he could do anything. It remind me of a lot of, like, a, a Jamie Foxx kind of a type of thing. So, I'll, I'll totally acknowledge that. I didn't know him personally to know him before then and say that. But over the years, since he's been what he is, as, as far as, like, a social media fucking character. Yeah. 
he's hilarious. Yeah. He's got multiple fucking characters he can pull off. He does all kinds of just random fucking bits. They're just really funny. Shout out to Jay Cyrus. If you don't know who that is, tap the fuck in. I'll make sure Chad puts his Instagram or something in the description below. Mm-hmm. But uh, when I met that tandem duo of, of Sebastian Garcia and Jay Cyrus, as fast as I met them, it was like I always knew about them because of the talent they had on stage, like what they were rocking. But then all of a sudden, it was more, I just saw this guy. I don't know if that's when Jay Cyrus like, was making a move towards that lane. Like, I, don't, I don't know what was happening. If, I don't know if that was a transition period or just my look at the draw, like he just wasn't in the building that night. I don't know what the scenario was with that. Mm-hmm. But uh, like I said, you fast forward 10 years, I haven't seen my guy in a minute. And then all of a sudden, I start reading about, <laughs> this is funny. I literally was reading something, and it said local Nashvilleian songwriter uh, signs something, a, a publishing deal. You know, uh, Rufio Hooks. And it had a picture of this guy. <laughs> and you're like, that ain't proof. Like, Hold the fuck up. I was like, I know that guy. One, because I would never forget the way you, you used to fuck. Bro, as far as an R&B singer goes, man, <sighs> R&B is tricky. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's easy to sell R and B, but to perform it, yeah, 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 is a yeah. different kind of. There's okay, and no disrespect to any R and B artist out there, but when you can do it in the studio is one thing, but when you can hold those type notes and do certain things on stage in real time, yeah, that's a different discussion. Mm-hmm. That's what this guy brought because I never heard none of the raw records. All I heard was what he was performing on stage. Yeah, yeah, and boy, that boy's getting down. <laughs> right and it's like what 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 happened to sebastian garcia and then all of a sudden like i said my guy signed a major publishing deal with uh what's the name of your uh, name? reservoir reservoir. Re- reservoir a publishing deal with reservoir right mm-hmm. and that's the name of their company just reservoir yeah, uh, yeah. yeah publishing. reservoir, reservoir pub- publishing yeah. gotcha cool and uh so my guy gets a, a publishing deal and he's writing songs right and, and amazingly talented artist. So if you if you had any taste of what I'm trying to get across to you guys as far as the amount of, of talent the guy possesses, it makes perfect sense that he would get a publishing deal 10 or 12 years later. Yeah. If he didn't work out as like being just a superstar on his own for whatever reason, or if he didn't just go down whatever road or chase whatever, he just decided to write songs, I didn't fucking know. But it made perfect fucking sense that he's still doing things. But as I'm reading this fucking article... The guy's responsible for one of the biggest fucking songs of 2021. Literally. The song sat 10 weeks at number one. Right? Yeah, yeah. The video for the song currently has almost 800 million views. Like, that's fucking bananas, bro. Dude. My guy wrote, or co-wrote, stop me whenever I'm wrong. Co-wrote, or as or as a... Oh, a co-wrote, co-wrote, yeah. Co-wrote, Butter, by BTS. Now, if, you, if you're unfucking familiar, you're probably not. Just, hit, just go find the record and hit play, and within 16 seconds, you're going to know exactly what song I'm talking about. <laughs> but to read that article and, A, read the article and just see that it had my guy's mug on it under Rufio Hooks, I'm, I'm like, oh, fuck, there he is. What's he doing? And I'm reading, and that's what they're talking about. They're talking about the success of, of the Butter record. And some of the... Uh, Past uh, producers you've worked with, and, and you know, mm-hmm. you know, songwriters and that kind of shit, and it makes perfect sense to me now. So that's when I'm I jump in. I have to go through Rufio Hooks to get a hold of my guy, and I'm on Instagram. Rufio, <laughs> come see me, man. Let's talk. Like, dude, congratulations. Thank you, man. A on a publishing deal, which is very sought after. It especially around the people I hang out with, a publishing deal is fucking gold nowadays. If you can get a publishing deal, you are, you're good. You wake up every day and you work on music for people, if not yourself. Mm -hmm. What a great scenario. And you get paid like a job. I I mean, where do I sign up? (laughs) Right? But it's, you don't just, they just don't hand that gig out. You know what I mean? You have to literally be an amazing songwriter to hold a position like that. That says enough about your talent right there. Thank but you, uh, congrats on the publishing deal and congrats on the record, man. man. I mean, that's a major fucking record, man. Dude, it, it is. It's um, it's something that changed my life. I, could, I couldn't I could be more uh, 
grateful and I, I think also like proud too like just as the fact like uh two guys from nashville actually like wrote one of the biggest records in the world if not one of the biggest records i guess in music history i think and i mean even when i say that that just sounds kind of weird to me like, that's mm -hmm. just like i always believed in myself but like i'd be lying if i told you i thought it was gonna get to here I, right. thought, I was like, yeah, no, I mean, I'll get a song on Billboard Hot 100. It may be like number 45, and I'll be happy with that. And yeah. then like this happens, and I'm like, oh, wow. And now it's like you really got to shift gears really quick. You really have to be like, okay, the person you were before like <clears throat> that got you here, and now you got to become somebody. Like keep some of your old, like, but you got to really turn turn it on, like, once you get this deal, it's actually more pressure than than people think. Like, they, uh, at least for me, I can't yeah, speak well, for everybody. I mean, else. you got to produce, right? I mean, you're not held to like a certain quota, but you're actually you're held, uh, held to a certain expectation. Otherwise, they're not going to put the bag behind you. Yeah, yeah, and, and but some people, I mean, some people write that one song, they get the bag, and then they just don't do anything else, and then they go blow it, and then they go spend it on things like. My mindset was always like, just give me the chance. Like I remember, like being young like super young, like probably like 11, 12 years old and like just listening to my CD player and like crying in my bed and being like, please, like this has to happen. Like mm. that's a, the amount of like obsessed I was with this. What age was that? You remember you think? Man, probably like 11, 12, 13, 14. Just sitting 15, there like yeah. in tears just with like over overwhelmed with like the amount of passion that you wanted to like. Overwhelmed with the amount of passion and also overwhelmed with how impossible it seemed yeah like like it's like you know people like if, if, even after this has happened people like will be like yeah man i always believed you would do it like i mean some people do like but yeah. some people did but like See, i'm one of those guys like like you know like there are people that believed it and then there's some people who i know like didn't believe it but you didn't know me that well but i but i believed it that's that's what i've had to like put across to you since you've been here is that dude i knew at the moment i heard you well, you know, it's, something was going to happen with you as far as music had to have. It's also because of the fact that like you, you, like you were in the music industry, like you understand, like you were an artist. So like you understand the grind, like there's a certain connection that we have. Whereas like some of these people were like people who had never been in the music industry, had no taste of what it felt like to try to drive and go mm -hmm. for something like this. Facts. And so when you can't relate to something like that, yeah, it's almost like... You know, it's kind of like, dude, this guy's just chasing a dream. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and to a, a certain extent, they were right. I mean, I was chasing a dream, but like to me, it didn't feel like a dream. It felt like something that was attainable my whole life. I just had to stick it out. Uh, that's self confidence, is what you're talking about there. I, uh, I definitely got some of it. That's sure. a great thing. But <clears throat> you got a niche when you took on R and B, like brother. Some like I told I told Rufio off camera because i haven't seen my guy in a long time but we were always cool like it was always this hey man how you doing you know salute whatever whatever and probably through the years i've sent him you know comment on his pics or something like he's he's always been me and him's always been solid so it wasn't hard for me to like reach out to him or anything like that but at yeah. the same time uh it was uh i didn't know how to uh i don't know i, I didn't want to bring you over here thinking that you're only here because of that yeah. because I think I think if Chad was here, he could co-sign. Shout out Chad Arn. Uh I told him via text message, I need to look back and see when that was, that we needed you to pull up. I needed to find you, and you had to pull up. Because uh, to be an R&B artist, bro, and to do it like you did it, and you do it, you still do it. You know, not other, other than being a successful, you know, having a publishing deal as a successful singer-songwriter. Don't forget that singer is at the part of that description. So that my guy just ain't back here just with a pen. He's still very vocal. Like I, we caught up probably six records. I got them all. <laughs> uh, but what is that like now for you? Is it hard to separate writing for for other people? And like, yeah. Um, do you have do you harness ideas based off? You know, like, that's too good. I ain't telling nobody that shit. Nah, man. I mean, how's that work? For me, man, I've always kind of been, I've, it's always been about the song, man. It's always been about, like, when I go into sessions, like, I will get some briefs. Now, that that sometimes a brief is basically when the publisher says, hey, uh, this person is looking for a song, and they're looking for this style of music. Sometimes we can do those, and those are awesome. Those are really good at, like, training the brain and, like, at, like, uh, like practicing, like, your muscle 
and you know just kind of like stuff like that that's that's really good for that and then hopefully you can land on something but um normally when i go into sessions man i just uh i just want to write the best song possible i literally go like hey man if it's not i say this saying all the time if you've written with me and you and you, you're watching this like you already know that i was telling them, I'm like, if it's not making the hairs on your arm stand up then it's like not worth it like we don't have to do it because this industry is so competitive you have to make sure whatever you're writing is the best like and if it's not the best that's okay you can walk away from that session and be like hey it's fine like we just weren't on today. That's mm-hmm. all. That's okay. I, I get exactly what you're saying. Bro. But it has to be like, like it's also like being comfortable and confident within yourself and knowing that you are everyone. Like when you work with people in Nashville, there's so many talented people. There's so many talented people that it's not really like you all have to be comfortable with being like, hey, guys, this just isn't it. And uh, if you can all communicate that way, the right way. Mm hmm. And you're all on the same page and it's beautiful. Just with constructive criticism. Yeah. Like, no, come on, man. Let's... Yeah, because you can spend like, I, I've been in sessions sometimes where you can spend three to four hours in a session and not just trying to beat down a song that you already know yeah. is not that good. And everybody knows it, but everybody's too scared to say, hey, let's cut right. it. So you got to you gotta be able to uh, accept the, we ain't here hurting feelings. We're here writing hit songs. Yeah. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we ain't writing a hit song, what are we doing? Yeah, and, and you know the thing is too, and the, the tough thing is like, the, like the word hit song is also has like a stigma to it. Like it's mm. like you think like, oh, we hear writing hit songs. Like, oh, okay, so only hit songs matter. No, no, I love all types of art. I'm just saying that a hit song to me doesn't have to be a number one on the radio. Yeah. A hit song to me just feels like a hit Agreed. song. Like, Man. oh, stamped. That, that's yeah. that's really it. Like when you get those hair, when you hear a song, yeah. And, and, and it hits you that way, that certain way. You know, it's a great fucking song yeah. or a hit song. That's right? a hit song to me. That doesn't. Yeah. But people use it as a number one. No, no, no. That I just mean it's just gotta. It's gotta resonate within your body. Yeah, trust me. For it to matter. Yeah, and, and that's what I'm always striving. I'm glad to. you stopped me on that and corrected me because that's well, you, way more accurate. That's exactly how it should be. When I said hit song, I, I wasn't thinking about it like that, but. You're right. You're absolutely right. But that's the way it can be perceived. Like, oh, like, oh, somebody just wants to do a hit song. No, I mean, like, yeah, it's got to be important, man. And if and that's what, like, we are so privileged to work in this industry. And to for me to get into a room with somebody from from Ohio, somebody from Seattle, Washington, who I would have never met in my life if it wasn't for this opportunity. I'm. I don't want to waste it, man. I want to make a. I want to create something beautiful and a connection that's like we'll always remember. Even if the song never gets cut, I'll. Always, I remember every person I've written every song with, just Dope. because it's just that important to me. Yeah. Like, what's art you created with, for whatever reason? Okay. So Rufio sat down, and we caught up for a while. You know, half hour, forty five minutes, maybe close to an hour. I was close to an hour. Right. <laughs> but it was sure. good though, bro. Right. It was good. Thousand percent. Sent me a, a handful of records. All of which, from a singer-songwriter's perspective, the ones that were mainly him on the vocals, I don't know, man. I may pitch it around. I made this. I made that. Yeah, we have aspirations for this person to, to hear it or do something with it. Uh, but the versatility of the pen is, is a discuss, it puts you in that position. You know what I'm saying? Because, you, bro, you literally wrote probably five, six songs that you sent me tonight for at least four or five different people mm. with topics, you know, I guess I wouldn't say topics, but with, uh, you know, themed around the projected type artist that's going to s- ultimately do the record. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Uh, not everybody can do that shit, bro. Man, I appreciate that, dude, because it's a, that, that's something I've always strived to do. But I think that's also something I just grew up in, man. Like, growing up in... um. <clears throat> Going up in Freehold, New Jersey, because that's where okay. I'm originally from. Shout and, uh, New Jersey. Yeah, shout out to Jersey. Never been that far north. Yeah. Fun fact. There we go. But so I grew up, fun fact is I grew up um, Freehold where uh, Bruce Springsteen came out of. I, okay. I went to the same high school. There we go. The boss, man. Yeah, that deserves a fun fact ding on that one. And uh, I went to the same high school as him. Um, he was cool people. You would always see him riding his bike around town. And stuff. For real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to go. I think his favorite pizzeria was called Feder. No, not Fe- uh, oh, It's not Federici's. It's right across the street from Federici's. I forget what it's called. But it may be Federici's. I'm not sure. It's been so long since I've been there. To New but Jersey? It, yeah, it's, it's been a while. 
<clears throat> and uh, it um, we would see him out there. Sometimes when we get out of school, we would go get pizza, and he'd be out there on his bike. Um, super cool person. Uh, we wouldn't bother him much, but you, you would see him out there. He would he played the stone pony. I played the stone pony. But the whole thing I'm going at was me go, growing up there. I'm 100 percent Colombian, so I grew up with a lot of R and B and uh, Hispanic music as my influence, I guess, in my culture. And uh, my sister was my big sister was a big influence to me. She introduced me to like Lauren Hill, Erica Badu, One Twelve, Shout to Sis. Bro, all those like so all shout that, out to her. <clears throat> all that type of music, I was always gravitated towards radio. What was on the radio? Then she played me all that stuff, and I was like, "Damn, this shit is fire!" Mm -hmm. And so, um, I really started listening to that. But then most of my friends, when I moved to Freehold, were like, um, uh, you know, like skaters. They listened to uh, a okay. lot of pop punk. Listened yeah. to a lot of um, Coheed and Cambria. The used. Um, a lot of also, uh, I guess, who who some Dropkick Murphys and stuff like that. You know, a lot of ska music and stuff. And so that influenced a lot of me, too. So my versatility, I think, comes just from listening to all that music. Then I'd go listen to John Mayer. I'd be hiding. I'd be hanging out with my skater friends while they're wearing Vans and Dickies. Yeah. But I'm listening to freaking Backstreet Boys and NSYNC on my CD player. And then. What was that like? Did you ever catch hell for that? No, nah, no, nah, bro. I used to hide my. I had a. We we used to have them trapper keepers, them CD trapper keepers that, and I would hide the Backstreet Boys, the In Sync ones, all the way in the back. But uh, then I, I don't all, know what you're talking about. I do. <laughs> I know. Trust me. I, same shit. And I would have the like. I'd have the freaking uh, like uh, rock CDs, like Coheed, Halifax, all in the front, and then in the middle, I would have a lot of the rap too, because I would listen to DMX, Big Pun, Cuban Link. And I would have okay. that right in the middle, Big L, and I'd be like, oh, okay. okay. So, yeah, bro, I, I listen to so much of that is why I feel like I can be versatile because it all only mattered about just hit records. Yeah, you're a fan of music. Yeah, bro, just a fan, man. That's dope. I'm a fan of music. I consider myself a fan of music. Dude, for sure. I, I think, like, you definitely got to be to at least even try to do this. You got to be a fan of music. It's got to, like, really hit you. So, as far as being a... Uh, Rufio Hooks, the the solo artist. Mm -hmm. What does that look like, man? How this, important is that to you, like every day? Uh, you know what? It's crazy because I've I've been using this word a lot recently. I just said it in one of my last shows. Um, I don't really, in my mind, I train my mind to not really think: Am I a songwriter? Am I a solo artist? Am I this and that? I'm just a creative. I mm -hmm. just really like to create. Like okay. I don't care. Whether it's art, whether it's fashion, whether it's a networking, creating relationships with people, whether it's music, like I just like to create dope stuff, and I feel like okay. that has gotten me this far. Like I just, I, at one point, I was focused on su such being an artist, but the only reason why I was focused on being an artist was because I felt like I couldn't get my songs heard by anybody. Mm -hmm. So, what's the only way to do it is by trying to be an artist. Let me write you a song. Yeah, well, like, be an artist and then hopefully people notice you and hear your songs. And so for me, it's like now it's just like just write good shit and then everything else will fall in line. Like when Butter happened, we wrote it three years before the song came out. And fun like, fact. yeah, which is another crazy fun fact. <laughs> we wrote That's it three, wild, dude. Three years before the song ever came out and like. We weren't just going there to be like, hey, we're going to write a song for BTS. Mm -hmm. We were just like, let's just write a good song. Right. And once you write good stuff, eventually it, it'll find the light of day. Yeah. And I think that's back to why I was so eager to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. Because on top of being originally, I knew you as just an amazing singer. Mm -hmm. Straight up. So the fact that you've evolved to a songwriter and then hear what you've been responsible for since I knew of you as a full-time singer. Right? It just makes so much more sense to me now man i appreciate that because because i mean i've i've always worried about i mean obviously singing but it wasn't really just singing though it wasn't about hitting a, a, like every note exactly right it was mm -hmm. about singing with passion like yeah. sell the record like when yeah. people come and see you perform they yeah. don't want to see an, a normal person like if they saw a normal person, then they might as well just get up there and maybe like do something. They I want love to, how you're talking about this. They want to see like 
they want to see something over the top, something that they want to do, but in, in their mind, sometimes they just don't, they can't. Mm -hmm. And which I think anybody's capable of doing this, but our mind plays a lot of tricks on us and talks us out of a lot of things. Mm. And so that's what, like, I feel like anybody's capable of whatever they want. They just got to stop talking themselves out of it. And so like, I wasn't really about just um, hitting every note. It was like, you got to film, you're going to feel me. Like when I go up there, you're going to feel everything I'm doing. Facts. And rewind I, to my comment from 12 years prior, there was undeniable dude. Like we didn't know the kid. We didn't know either one of them kids and they got up there to do their thing. And then it was like, bro, Hey, the motherfuckers were the truth. Did you see that? <laughs> the boys are shaking it. And then they come back the next time. And then it's like, before y'all even start, when we see y'all walking towards us, it's like, Oh shit. Hey, look, bro. Some dudes from last week. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was it, man. And then uh, I found a flyer. I, 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 I'll try to find it and put it up right here. If I don't, don't blast me in the comments. I'm just being lazy. But I found a, a flyer where later it's undeniable that we had recognized that talent because we reached out to you for an R&B showcase that Bobby, Bobby Hooks at the yeah, time yeah. for Show and Proof put on like an R&B showcase. Yeah, yeah. And who do you know was on that flyer? And I thought back and I'm like, man, I mean, you was always like accessible. Mm -hmm. but then uh it's not that i forgot about you it's just i just didn't see enough i didn't see you as an artist out here like yeah man grinding yeah i was i was i was just kind of hot like I was, out. I was hiding out and just really like working but at the same time i was um and by working i mean like i was serving tables for sure like yeah. I, was, I was serving tables till i the still day. work i still hey i mean i think we i to be honest, bro, I still wanted to keep my job. <laughs> I wanted to keep my job because they gave me health insurance, even though I was part time. And so I was like, please, let me just keep my job. But they're like, nah, we need you more than two days. And I love yeah. the job. I worked at Top Golf. I thought it was a cool job, man. I, had, I bet it would be. Top I had golf. mad fun out there. And the managers out there were mad cool. Everybody was cool out there. And um, so, like, yeah, I, I was working doing that. But at the same time, I was writing. But I was really focused on writing for other people because I felt like my artist stuff was too much like out here in Nashville and like I was trying to say a lot of crazy things like I mean one of the songs that I came out with was called Tony Montana and I mean hey. and hey, I, I was, yeah I was just kind of going off the walls I was trying to be like <laughs> a, I was trying to be like honestly and I still think I can't be because because it's still flex talk your shit yeah no I still think I can't be I mean I got a show actually shout out I got a show actually let me let me pull out my phone and see when I got this show yeah do that because I'm gonna try to put this bitch out quick uh just for the fact that I had to wait to get him over here. He's a busy guy, man. He's been in these writing sessions for like two hours and they turn into three, four hours. Man. Busy guy. And plus I'm I'm farther away from the city. So I'm not real accessible over here. I gotta that's why I appreciate you taking the time to pull up on me. Hey bro. Um I actually have one um uh the twenty seventh uh whiskey jam. Oh, okay. So you got plenty of time then. So as we're filming this on Wednesday, June first. So this I'll try to put it out Friday if possible. It depends on how one tight Jake we go. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it comes out, that'll it'll be long before then, so they'll know where to find you yeah. come that date. Yeah, yeah, it'll be uh, out the 27th um, at Whiskey Jam. We're going to be playing out there. We're going to be playing a bunch of uh, original stuff, too. And uh, I'm sure we'll play Butter, too. I mean, And it'll be with a band, man. My band smacks, man. Uh, so if you jump down the rabbit hole mm -hmm. and Google the guy, and if you stumble on YouTube... You can find, you can find the guy like somebody posted something like somebody. It'd be just Joe Schmo over there in the corner. He's like, "Oh, he's good, honey. I'm gonna record him and put him on my YouTube channel." And they, it's just like a consumer recording you. But bro, you're like when he talked about uh, doing it with a passion. I think that's how you worded it a minute ago. Mm -hmm. And when you get up there, your job is to, blah, you know, like the way you just pitched that. 100% accurate as to how you do your thing, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, when a when an R&B artist goes in the way you, like, bro, my guy be up there, you you be seeing, like, veins oh, yeah, in his neck. Veins popping out, bro. You know what I'm saying? And that's, and that's no, all jokes aside, <laughs> I mean, that means he's up there giving that, giving it all, mm -hmm. putting it out there. You don't see a lot of cats really singing like that. You know what I'm saying? Like kids get up there and sing, great, but hold like this hold, hold limit the key. You know what I'm saying? They're not they're not gonna go. They're not gonna risk the range. Yeah, my guys up there going, man. I'm trying to tell y'all, man. I appreciate it because I I feel like I think it's like uh, 
uh, one thing I was trying to describe was like kind of like it's like an MGK type of vibe. With like a Tory Lanez, if you've ever seen Tory mm. Lanez perform, that dude goes not. off. Tory Lanez goes one of the off. goats, man. He's a, he's so fucking talented. Man. He's, it's like kind of those two types of vibe with a mix of like I'm a little Bruno, and uh, I mean, and so all those guys give it everything they got. Like mm. every time, like when you see MGK perform, I think he performed in Denver, and the dude was like climbing on top of the stage. Yeah, he's fucking crazy. Man. Yeah, so it's like giving some of giving some of that, but like doing it in a way where you can also sing and be sexy if you need to be. You know, it's like I've ne- felt like I've never seen anybody kind of do anything like that. And yeah. so, so that's kind of the vibe that I've been trying, man. Yeah, and not I, I know exactly what you're trying to say. Just not be the next like, not gimmick, but. I guess gimmicky fuck where you're up there just doing fucking choreographed dances and shit. And, and well, see, I feel like you don't even, I mean, chore, choreographed dancing and everything like that. There's a, there's a time and a place for it mm-hmm. in my music. Like if it was my original stuff, I don't think I really need that that mm-hmm. much. I mean, I think it's more of a feel. It's more of like, a, you know, you just go up there, you don't really plan it. You just kind of do it and you just kind of let get lost in it. You know, there's a, a guy named, if you've ever seen uh, True Blood, if you watch a lot of True Blood, him performing live, he just kind of goes off. There's no choreography. There's just him just being immersed in the music. No, I'm no clue of what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, True Blood. True Blood. True he just, blood, he just yeah. sits up there going. Well, yeah, yeah, bro. Does he, he have a viral clip out right now? Yeah, yeah. He's got, he's got, bro, he's, he's very popular artist right now. There's something right now where some dudes up stage. He's like, nobody's done up. No, no, no. He, I don't know what no, that he, is. That's he's more rock, fire. rocky rap ish type of uh, emo ish feel to him. But um, I mean, I just think that vibe is just kind of, kind of in, and I've kind of gravitated towards it because of growing up with like you know, like listening to punk rock and bands like that. That I've just kind of been like, man, let me throw this with some like urban flair, sl- like slur my words, like slang shit around. I think it's something cool that hasn't been done. Yeah. So, man. I could talk to you all night, dog. The way that, uh, if you rewind to how I say I initially saw you as an artist, mm-hmm. it was with Jay Cyrus. And yeah. Jay Cyrus was a, a Caucasian rapper. And Jay Cyrus was one of the, he's a versatile rapper. He, dude's got bars. But he could rap. He's almost melodic nowadays when he puts yeah. out, he's got some melodic records now. He does, he does. Uh, shout out Jay Cyrus, man. Call me, man. Uh, but the songs I would hear Rufio on, were always complimenting his rhymes. Mm-hmm. So he was all over the hooks, had like little four-bar bridges here and there, maybe a verse on a song yeah, or yeah. something like that on a set or something. But uh, I wish y'all, could, I wish y'all had any idea of some of the context of the records I heard prior to us hitting record on the podcast. The context of the records are, these are grown folks' records. These are fucking... I know there was two or three on there where I kept saying it, I liked it better than the last one. Hey, but you, bro, you that's what that's what I want some like hits been, around in there, man. Like I feel like I've been saying that for a while, man. I feel like every time I work on something, I'm like, damn, I like this better than the last one. I like this better than the last one. And I just think you're just scratching the surface, Rufio. Like really, dog. Like you got one notch on your belt, right? Like one hit record, right? Right now, mm-hmm. but dude, like you've only been in the game a year, really. Yeah, like that. That's what's so crazy because I've been doing it for so long. Yeah, and like continuous, like it never stopped. Even when you didn't see it, like it never, it was there. It was like continuously still working. I may have just not been posting as much. I was writing and I was just like trying to figure everything out. And it's so crazy because like now people like actually like take sessions and stuff. Like before, mm-hmm. and I'm still doing this, but before I was booking everything, doing everything myself. Now I have an amazing team with me that helps and strategizes with me. Like, like when I, when I, when I sign with uh reservoir, like I look at them, they're not my boss. They're my business partner Yeah, and we're trying to build a brand. Yeah. They're, and they're, so, they're basically creating the scenarios for you. They present you with different opportunities just all the time. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I think we, we, we do that to, to each other. Gotcha. I present like, I'll be like, Hey, I found out I can get a session with this person. And then they'll be like, Oh, that's great. Let's pair it with that person. And that's why mm. it's like. I try to instill the whole thing of a team. I think a lot of people, when they sign a pub deal, they're like, oh, okay, they're going to set up all my sessions and that's it. I think that's a total wrong mindset to have. I've like, I'm still setting up stuff on my own because I just, I have this hunger. It's like literally, I told one of my buddies and I'm not trying to sound arrogant or nothing, but it's like, I told one of my buddies, I said, I was like, you let a dude this hungry and this kind of 
you know, I haven't been broke, but I haven't been <laughs> I haven't been great these last couple of years. I promise you that. You let a dude this hungry sit at the table. I promise you, I'm gonna grab food from everybody's plate. That's just what I'm gonna do, bro. Like right. it's it's like it's I have it like I have no other thing. Like you just gave me an opportunity of a lifetime, man. Yeah. That's just how, like, and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it politely. I'm not gonna be like, yo, just give me that. Like, I'm gonna be like, yo, let me get some. Yeah. Mind if I, <laughs> mind if I try that? Yeah, that's gonna be, a, yo, let me get some, and then they're gonna be like, yeah, sure. Then we're just gonna rock together. That's that's the way I think about it, man. I just, uh, I I appreciate you saying I just scratched the service because I feel that way too. But with that, with that comes a lot of pressure. Yeah. You know, well, like, just keep doing you. Oh, uh, I, I, uh, where are we at? We're at. 35. I got Rufio hooks in the fucking building, dude. I'm really stoked to have you here, bro. Uh, we're going to – I got you for a second, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't let's run let's off on me. a little bathroom break or Yeah, something. there you go. Yeah, let's do that. Shouts to the sponsors. We'll be right back. Rufio hooks in the building. I got to give a huge, huge shout-out to my man Mark Gray over at South Nashville Heating and Cooling. Uh, they are a new sponsor here at the show, and uh, we're, we're glad Shout to have to him more. aboard. Uh, he's a longtime supporter of Show Improve Entertainment and a longtime supporter of Chad Arms and Squints, and now is a full time supporter of the Sh- I Got Some Shit to Say podcast, which we fucking love. Yeah, uh, they specialize in like quiet HVAC systems and and those kind of things, along with any of your HVAC needs. Mark and him get you good. Mark and him's the plug on the HVACs, man. Been that way too. For sure. uh, yeah, Not again, huge, huge, huge shout out to oh, up, South man. Nashville Heating and Cooling Company. Uh, that's expert design, quality installation, superior service since 1985. Y'all see the name? Y'all see the number? Y'all see the website. Go check out 1980. Guys. Look here. 1985. That so is yeah. almost 40 years. Yeah. Shout out to those guys, man. They know what they're doing. Shout out to Mark Gray, man. South Nashville Heating and Cooling Company. It's uh, I got some shit set up podcast, man. We're back, man. I'm uh, sitting here catching up with my guy, Rufio Hooks. Hey, we back. Yeah, we definitely are. It's a... Uh, been a great evening, man. I've had a great time catching up with you this evening. Hey, man, so have I. Bro. Uh, it's really, I'll, I'll say it on camera, it's kind of hard to believe, honestly, based off the time we hung out just catching up prior to hit and record, and then the time in between the break, shout out to the sponsors. And then uh, it feels like I haven't, it, it's literally been probably eight years since I've been, what's up, bro? One of those. I haven't even seen the guy. But it doesn't feel like eight years at all. No, bro. Right? No. We, we we change a little bit, but not too much. For sure. But it, it definitely don't feel like that. It's been a it's been good having you on. But uh as as you've been here tonight, I've tried to introduce people to you and a little bit about your story and where you're at now and what you're yeah. doing now. But it it kind of started like I told y'all, I reached out to Rufio because I remember him being an amazing talent. That's what made me like look for him tonight today and see where he was and what he was doing. Because I knew about Jay Cyrus. I just didn't see Rufio, right? But I was looking for Sebastian Garcia. Tell me about that. Well, when Where did you flip that switch? Man. It, I love the name Rufio Hooks. Thank you, man. I fucking love it. Bro, it, it, it came actually, um, I've been thinking about it for a while. Because I always felt like every time I went on stage and like every time I, I did anything like... I'm a different person when you meet me in person as I am when I go on stage. Once I go on stage, like, to me, I flip a switch. I'm like a killer. I'm just like, Dope. I'm just like, yo, it's it's like Lincoln Hawk and over the top. Yeah, bro, that's really what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, that's what's up. It's, it's just like, yeah, it's just like the switch goes on, and I'm like, yo, like nothing else matters but this in this moment, in Dope. this time. And so, love it. So I felt, I felt like that. I had two different alter egos, and um, okay. I had talked to my buddy, actually, Stephen Kirk, the guy who we wrote the song with originally, mm-hmm. uh, Butter. And um, I like told him, I was like, yo, bro, I got this idea. And Stephen has a way of, um, you know, like being like, you should do it. Like, go ahead and do it. And like encouragement. He's a he's a good encourager. Yeah. A good encourager. Gotcha. And, like, like, from, that's one of his amazing talents besides just being a, a dope writer and everything. And um, he, I like I, I think like a lot of times when you tell people an idea especially when they know you from a certain person. Mm -hmm. They know you as Sebastian Garcia. You tell them that idea. They're like, oh, no, that's stupid. Why? Because they can't see what you see in your head. Mm. And so when I saw that, I was like, nah, man, my favorite producers, like Timberland, he ain't called Timberland. Bruno Mars is not called Bruno Mars. That's not his real name. I get it. Uh, 
Swiss beats. I'm not called squints. Yeah, and you ain't really born as squints. You, you know, know what I'm saying? I totally get it. So it was kind of like I wanted that alter ego type of thing. And then um, when I did it, I I remember the night I left, I did it. And um, I was like, I'm going to delete every one of my pictures who was Sebastian Garcia. Like mm, that okay. person. Like not even going to save them, all of them from college, everything. From, you didn't save them? No, bro, because I felt like if I saved them, I was going to be still holding on as a backup plan to Sebastian Garcia. Wow. So I just deleted it all. That's deep. How do you feel about that now? You sound like you got a little bit of disappointment in your voice. No, no, man. I, I'm not mad about it at all, bro. Like, gotcha. I, I, would, I cool. would trade well, good for, for you. The world. Good for you. Yeah. yeah, if that's how you're leaning, then I'm leaning with you. I'm just saying, like, I, I you know. No, it just. I'd be me. sad. No, nah, man. I deleted all that stuff because I knew I was like, I don't want, I don't want to, like, I don't want to give myself another option to fall back on something. And then the next thing I did was I tattooed it on my fingers. Mm. That's why I always do that. Mm. But I, I put Rufio hooks here, and I, that's why I always do the pose where I cover my face like this uh, because it says Rufio hooks on it. Got you. I and love if this. you go on my Instagram, you can see my pose. That's like, like I, at that point, I was like, I was building a brand, but I didn't even realize it. I was that just is called it. manifestation. Yeah, man. I just kind of was like, all right, once you tattoo it on your fingers, at that point, you can't go. Committed. Back. You got to. Right. You deleted the pictures. Now it's on your fingers. You can't mm-hmm. go back. So, um, I love it. I just, that, that was my realization. After that moment, I never looked back and I was like, you know, and it took a while, but like as it got accepted more and more, and like, you know what it was? I'm sure a lot of people were like, Rufio Hooks, that's a stupid idea. He's going to fall off. And then I just kept on consistently, like continuously, just like chugging along. And, uh, and then boom. Next thing you know, like it hits, and now everyone's like, "Yeah, it's dope." I've but heard like, of him. But, but it was it was dope before. I just, I mean, it was very true. But the reason why I wanted to bring up the name change is because, a, I remember Sebastian Garcia. B, that's who I went after when I started looking for that amazingly talented gentleman that I met back in the day. That I know that he has to still be pursuing some type of music somehow, some way. I don't give a fuck what he's doing. That boy had pipes. I know he could fuck whatever he's doing. Where's he at nowadays? Couldn't find it, bro. Couldn't find him, but you can find old stuff. You can find old Sebastian Garcia stuff and other Sebastian Garcias, Mm -hmm. multiple ones. Yeah. It was this guy from Spain, right? Who does like There's that. literally three or five other ones. There is. That's unfortunate. Now go ahead, type in Rufio. Now Hooks. go ahead and type in Rufio Hooks, and it will lead you to one record. That record is entitled uh, "Just Do It." Just do it. Great record. Thank you, man. Cool record. Uh, my name's Squints. I'm an asshole, tough ass critic. That one record that you guys can literally go to on Apple Music, Spotify, wherever the fuck, and type in Rufio Hooks and hear a record from my guy. That record ain't got shit on none of the six that I heard prior to yeah, man, our was, sit down today. That was a young, that was a, a very young me, like, thinking, like, okay, you know. I, and I, that's fine. Yeah. My question leads to, when do we get some of that shit? Oh, uh, soon, man. I mean, uh, I think right now the focus is been has been on writing, but the the crazy thing is, you know, how I was telling you earlier. I guess it's all serendipitous now. I was good word. You, I was telling you. Uh, thank you, bro. <laughs> I try to work on vocabulary. That was very good, though. That was a good one. So as you, serendipitous. So as you go, like I, at first, I said, you know, I'm just worried about writing good songs, right? Yeah. You know, it don't matter what artist we're writing for. Mm-hmm. As I've been doing this, subconsciously, I have been writing for myself. And it's just like on the records that I'm like, yo, this is dope. And then I'll send them to my publisher and my manager. And they're like, I don't know who would sing on this except for you. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe I need to put this stuff out. Yeah. And so, like, I've been thinking about it a lot. I'm going through um, not a, like a rebranding of Rufio Hooks, but I am going through rebranding of Rufio Hooks. Like, I'm like I'm now the person I was a year ago who, mm-hmm. to who I am now is completely exactly. different. So. Let me let me pause you. I know Sebastian Garcia, the artist. I know Rufio Hooks, the singer songwriter. I'd love to see Rufio Hooks, the artist. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got a cheerleader in me. Thank you. Because I've always been a fan. Like, real talk. Uh, shout out Scotty Broadway. If y'all ain't tapped in yet, uh, Scotty, I put him on your ship when he pulled up, just so you're aware. Hey. Yeah. Uh, but 
I love the R and B lane. I always have, dog. I told I told Rufio literally asking. I swear to God, and I've done this for another R and B guest. I'm sure where I slapped both hands down on the table and told him to pick a finger to cut off to give me the abilities that he has on a microphone. He did say that, right? Now I love my type of cadence and the way I'm able to talk my shit or whatever. But at the same time, to be vocally fucking gifted and be able to have the balls to fucking record records. Sing the motherfuckers, bro. That's it. Is not everybody is born to sing. Obviously, even the people in church. When you go to church, eighty five percent of the talented people in church are people that realize they could sing. They they finally had the courage to do it when they were fifty years old. Hey, but some of them, there's a difference. If you ever go to like, you, like you know, grown growing up, like I sometimes I would go just trying to like try to sing and perform. So where I'd go to New York or like. Uh, mm-hmm. I'd been to Atlanta mm-hmm. when I was going to MTSU. I'd go down to Atlanta as well. And um, there's a difference between like people saying, oh, that boy can sing. And then that boy can sing. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a, a huge difference. Yeah. Man. And it's like. You can sing. And it's, and, and it's not about, again, remember, it's not about hitting every note. And it's about just, just being rem- memorable, man. Like memorable. In a exactly way. why you're here. Like I said, don't get it fucked up. You're not here because you wrote a top t- a number one record for 10 consecutive weeks. You're not here because of any of that. I promise you. You're here because of what you just fucking said. To put a memorable impact on someone as a consumer mm-hmm. with that one chance you have as an artist. Yeah. You captivated me way back when, my friend, to where I knew you had the type of talent that where 12 years later I could see Maybe not at this platform. I didn't know we'd be here. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know we'd be here. Either. Right, <laughs> but I'm glad we are. Yeah, dude. Be- because uh, behind the scenes and type, well, like I said, the one record that you guys, I can steer you guys to. <clears throat> it's a great record. It really is. Like, don't get it fucked up. But I want them to hear so much more of you as an artist because it's so hard for them to recognize how to hear you as a songwriter. Yeah, yeah. That that's it's really- very hard to do that. And I think when I made Rufio Hooks, it was like. You know, I always had aspirations of being the artist, but I think I was like, uh, you know, I, you, again, I mean, I still go through it. I talk myself out of things and um, I think, stop. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree, man. I just like just call me, dude. I, just fucking call me. It's like, Squinch, what am I thinking? Tell me if I'm wrong and dish it out at me and I'll tell you if you're an idiot or if you should move forward. And I'll try to be as accurate as I can. I don't know if that means anything, but I can be that guy. Because, dude, if that's all you need to be more of a an artist, my dog, fucking call me. It's, yeah, bro. It's, it's it like, you know, the thing is I always got, I think I got the performance. I think I got the songwriting down, the marketing and all that stuff. It's like that part I think about, but I just have so much on my plate with writing that I'm like, man, I need to just hire a marketing team or do something, man. I, no. I, don't have I think that. you need to house a couple of those little ideas and... Put Find out. the right opportunity to put out a record. I will, no, we're gonna do singles though. I mean, I, I, I promise you, we're gonna do a single. We're gonna put a, a new single out real soon. So it's uh, it's June. It's first week of June. Can we expect one, a new Rufio Hooks record by the end of the year? You you could I, I would say a hundred percent. Great answer. Hundred percent. Great answer. Before the end of the year, even if not sooner than that. So, um, what about being a feature artist? What does that look like? Um, a feature artist. Can somebody can somebody tap into Rufio Hooks and then be like, "Damn, I need to just get on a record." Yeah, that that would be dope. <laughs> what does that sound like? I mean, that would, would you be, be open to something like oh, that? Oh, hundred percent. I know a guy named Chad Arms. He's the best rapper alive. That is got so much fucking ideas and great records tucked to the side, and has a brand new album coming out first week of July. Just so y'all know. But uh, I'd love and my friend Leroy Biggs. He's one of the best up and coming rappers in Nashville right now. He just signed a Street Flavor record. Great. And, and I have a friend named O-N-E. I actually let you hear O-N-E record before we started mm-hmm. tonight, uh, along with Chad Arms. I don't think I let him hear Leroy. But Lex Top Dollar, I'd love for any of these guys to be to work with you. I, I, I even showed uh, my, my friend Rufio, my friend Logan Sport, my, con- my country cat. You did. I put him on that. Like a... A lot of these dudes need those type of features, bro. 
Hey man, I mean, I, only people I'd call is you or Scotty Broadway. I'm I'm always open to anything, man. I just like like I said, as long as it's good, bro, and we rocking, let's go. Yeah, but I liked it earlier when you said if we ain't making hit records, what are we doing? It ain't worth it, bro. I love that type of talk. Mm-hmm. Love it. Ask Chad Arms. He will stamp that me saying that because he knows that's how I feel. If we ain't making hit records, what the fuck are we doing? That was my thing with freestyling all the time when I was an artist. I was like, bro, what the fuck are we freestyling for? That shit don't pay the bills. Yeah. Nowadays it can, but I mean it can if you freestyle the right way. There's a di- there's like different. battle rapping and yeah. shit. Yeah, there's freestyling like, hey, we ain't writing anything down. Then there's freestyling, and then oh, those two lines were dope. Let's keep that, and then freestyle again. Then keep two lines. There's there's different ways around it, but yeah, I mean I agree with you. It's just it's got to be a lot of structure, bro. Well, um, structure. I'm prof- I'm fucking proud of you, Bubba. Thank I'm you, I'm glad we had I'm glad that however long it's been since we've had the opportunity and never had this type of opportunity. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that we've both matured enough and became fathers and fucking went through life a little bit. You've went down the path I only fucking thought you would, to be honest. If it wasn't just being a fucking next R and B sensation to be in some type of role that you currently are in, regardless of the struggle and the length of time it took you to get there. You're exactly where I thought you would be, but I'm proud of you for being there. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, bro. I mean, it means, it means the world, bro. And I appreciate you having me out here, man. It was, it was a good time. It was great catching up. And yeah. And I'm glad I have that. I'm glad I have this type of platform to call a person like you nowadays, as long as it's been, like, hey man, come hang out with me for a minute. Let's talk. Hey, and just time. giving giving the listeners and watchers an opportunity to meet somebody that has done some great fucking shit, but has barely scratched the surface. Finally, of the potential that that individual has to make an impact with this music shit. That's what. That's what. I swear, me and Chad on the show, we we try so hard to put people in front of y'all. Just tap the fuck in. You know what I mean? Tap in. Tap the fuck in. But Rufio, I need more music, okay? We got some coming out, bro. But if you dig a little bit deeper, like I said, I've dropped that Sebastian Garcia shit a couple times. If you if you dig deep enough, you will hear this guy plenty. But uh Rufio Hooks. Uh I'm glad that you took the time to come through and hang out with me, dog. It's been a pleasure fucking hanging out with you this evening. And I tell all the guests that come through here, bro. Once you obtain that chair on I Got Some Shit to Say, anytime you got some shit to say, just pull the fuck up. Hey, you already know I will. You know what I mean? But only the real get that chair, so don't think that's just an open invite to everybody. Because, <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, we've been working, man, and I'm glad that uh, I had the opportunity to reach out and you accept the invite and pull up on me, bro. And it's been as fucking genuine as it has, just catching up with you, bro, and just hanging out with you. And uh, I wish nothing but the fucking best for you, bro. This is just the beginning for you, man. Thank you, bro. I told him. I told him before he pulled up, though, or when he pulled up, I said I already knew what the name of the episode was going to be. It's going to be Batarang or Bangarang. Ba- no, no. Uh, is it Batarang? No, or bangerang? No, no. Is it Bangarang? Bangarang. Bangarang. We got to make him Bangarang. It's Bangarang. That's it, Bangarang. Hey, but too, I was going to say for, thank you guys for having me out here. If you want to uh, catch up on anything, honestly, where I stay on mostly is uh, Instagram at Rufio Hooks. Um, yeah. we'll you- make sure all that's below in the comments. Chad's really good about that shit. And Chad, I know Chad wanted to be here tonight, and he told me to tell you what's up. Hey, Chad. But he'll definitely, I mean, this is Chad on TV. <clears throat> so he'll be chasing that feature down really soon. But we need to make that happen, dude. He's he's killing it right now. Let's do it, bro. But, uh, yeah, man, it's uh, Rufio Hooks, man. I appreciate you, dude. It's Squint615. I got some shit to say.com. Y'all tap the fuck in below, man. It's Chad on TV, man. We out of here. Pow. Bum, 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 bitch, we got beers. <laughs>